Why didn't I ask my parents for 20 bucks and buy thousands of bitcoins in 2009? I would definitely do that if I could go back in time. And about the future? Are we able to see how people will colonize Mars? It would be cool to witness that firsthand. But how often do you think about the future or the past events in that way? Wouldn't it be amazing to know all of the future events and live with full confidence for the rest of your life? Or go back in time and deliver those perfect comebacks you think of later? Well, it will be a difficult path with lots of paradoxes and inconsistencies, but let's try to figure out together and imagine a world where time travel machines actually exist. And maybe you don't know, but we publish a new video every week, so be sure to subscribe to not miss out on the next one. And if there are any time travelers out there, let me know in the comments below some useful information from the future because I'll be really grateful for it. And now, get into your time machine and let's get started. But first, let me appeal to the physicists out there. Yes, I know that dissolving in a time travel machine and appearing in another time is impossible because it defies our understanding of physics, the fundamental laws of nature and all of that. But let us just have a little bit of fun and avoid these boring technicalities. It's a hypothetical situation anyway. But are we really sure that it's impossible? Well, what if I told you that it's technically possible for any of us? How about this? Imagine a situation where you stand on the top floor of the Empire State Building and your friend is in the same place but on the ground floor. If you both stay like this for only about 100 years, the time on your clocks will show a difference of a very tiny fraction of a second. I know it's not what you would expect from time traveling and you're unlikely to be able to live to check it out, but that's pretty much it. And it's all because of the effects of gravity on time, thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity. In short, the stronger the gravitational field, the slower that time moves. And when we talk about seeing the past, you actually don't need to look much further than our night sky. Because when you look up at the stars, you're essentially looking back in time. The light from the stars travels vast distances, taking millions of years to reach us. And by the way, it's highly likely that most of the stars you see simply don't exist anymore. If you take a telescope and look at the moon, you would see it as it looked about 1.3 seconds ago. And even if the sun explodes, you wouldn't feel anything for about 8 minutes. For you, the sky would be as clear and sunny as usual, even though the sun would no longer exist. Astronomers use this principle to study the history of the universe, and by observing distant galaxies, we can see what they looked like billions of years ago, right after the Big Bang. So technically, if you did find yourself a couple of light years away from the Earth with a monster telescope capable of zooming in on our planet to see the streets and homes, well, you could see yourself but a couple of years ago in real time, which is kinda mind-blowing. The reality is, our universe allows us to see the past but not participate in it because the closer you get to the past you're looking at, the more that time aligns for you and for the past that you see. But now let's finally imagine that time travel machines really do exist. Would you be able to buy one to use as you wish? Honestly, it's highly unlikely. Such an important piece of technology would definitely be government property, with only a small circle of people able to use it. It would undoubtedly require strict regulations, like who gets to travel and when and why. Governments may set up agencies to oversee time travel, issuing licenses and permits. Think of it like getting a driver's license, but way more intense. You would probably have to prove that you know all the rules of time travel, understand the risks, and demonstrate that you won't mess up the timeline. Maybe you'd even need to take a class or pass a tough test. And the permits? Well, those would be like permission slips for specific trips. Want to see all the dinosaurs or witness the signing of the Declaration of Independence? You need a special permit for that, detailing exactly when and where you're allowed to go and what you're allowed to do. It's all about preventing chaos while keeping history intact. But it's not interesting without breaking a timeline situation, right? We'll be talking about that a little bit later, but now let's get into the details of how it would work. Let's just say that you're lucky enough to get permission from the government. You get into the time machine, you read the instructions and so on, but the question becomes, why do we even need to go to the past, for example? Well, the governments would assign you to check out the actual events that shaped history. 
Historians would really love the chance to confirm the accuracy of historical records, solve ancient mysteries, or even gather first-hand accounts of significant events. Maybe we would finally figure out how exactly the ancient Egyptians built their pyramids, or even go back to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and witness his resurrection. By the way, religion. I mean, what if, and this is just a guess, but maybe we could see with our own eyes that there wasn't anything that we believe in. What would it mean for religion in our own time? And do you think the government would reveal that kind of information to the world? With proof, of course? Probably not, just like any other unpleasant fact that we could uncover from venturing throughout history. But enough about that, because I want to travel right to the age of dinosaurs and see the T-Rex with my very own eyes. But it's not as easy as it sounds. I mean, first off, some kind of time travel police would likely prohibit such a trip. And even if you ignore the restrictions, the most dangerous thing wouldn't be getting eaten by a dinosaur, but the air itself. Because the thing is, during that time, the oxygen levels were higher, which would definitely affect your ability to breathe. Oh, and by the way, the same goes for ancient Egypt, where the air would contain different pollutants and pathogens. So you'd need to be vaccinated and well equipped with all the necessary breathing apparatus at the very least. But what about traveling to the future? Well, that's a whole different matter. Just imagine the possibilities. We could see the latest advancements in technology, understand the outcomes of current global issues, and yeah, check out all the sporting event winners and go back to bed on them. The knowledge we would gain could be used to prevent disasters, improve our quality of life, and solve problems that seem insurmountable today. In short, traveling to the future would be incredibly useful. But exploring the future also comes with its own set of paradoxes. What if you meet your future descendants? How would you interact with them? And what about meeting your future self? Well, it's time to boil your brain and talk about the paradoxes you'd face in the future and the past. But before we do that, you have to do some necessary things to keep this timeline safe. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you're enjoying the video, leave a like right now. With all of that done, prepare yourself, and let's get into the paradoxes. Imagine you travel 30 years into the future, and you come face to face with an older version of yourself. The first thing you'd probably want to know is how your life turned out. Did you achieve your dreams? Are you happy? But here's the catch. Knowing these things could really change how you act when you return to the present. And if you find out something negative, it may demotivate you or even cause you to make different choices, potentially changing the future you saw. Another paradox to consider is the potential for creating dependencies. If we bring future technology back to the present, it may solve our problems temporarily, but could also prevent us from developing our own solutions. This could lead to a stagnation of innovation and make us overly reliant on future advancements. But the most complex paradoxes actually relate to the past. You've probably heard about the grandfather paradox. Long story short, you travel back in time and accidentally prevent your grandfather from meeting your grandmother. Well, this would mean that your parents were never born and then consequently you were never born. But if you were never born, how could you have traveled back in time to prevent their meeting in the first place? At this moment, I'm starting to feel dizzy. Another one is the time loop. This happens when a future event causes a past event, which in turn causes the future event. <laughs> now let's get back to that heartbreaking Bitcoin example. Let's say you did travel back in time to 2009 and you told your younger self to buy hundreds of Bitcoins, spending just a couple of dollars. Your younger self then buys those Bitcoins, holds on to them, becomes incredibly wealthy, and eventually funds the creation of the time machine, which allows you to travel back in time in the first place. It's here that we have the cause and effect loop endlessly, making it difficult to figure out where the original information about buying Bitcoins came from. And at first glance, everything seems fine, but it's also creating a reality where the timeline becomes unstable or even incoherent, and the universe just doesn't work that way. Next up, you may have heard about the butterfly effect. You know, like when stepping on a butterfly in the Jurassic period could set off a chain of events that totally changes the course of history. Well, this makes time travel to the past incredibly risky, as even minor and seemingly insignificant actions could make huge consequences. And the final one is the issue of historical inevitability. 
This theory suggests that even if you try to change the past, events might still unfold in a way that leads to the same outcome. For example, let's say you go back in time to prevent a major war. You may succeed in stopping the initial cause, but then another event could trigger the war anyways, leading to the same or even similar result. Take World War II, Hitler, and the Holocaust. You know how many bad things that one man did to the entire world? They even created gas chambers for Jewish people just because of their ethnicity. So can we go back and get rid of Hitler? Well, by the way, there's even an entire article on Wikipedia about that. But would eliminating one single man prevent World War II, or would another figure have risen in his place? For example, let's imagine this kind of vicious circle. Young Hitler's walking around in the city, and suddenly some time travelers come and take him out. Then the same situation happens again and again and again over the years, and he doesn't understand why, because he hasn't done anything wrong yet. But then he discovers that everyone who wanted to take him out had one thing in common, and they were all Jewish. And that's why he ended up hating them. Wow, there's a script I have to sell to the studio. But seriously, with such an enormous amount of unpredictable events and paradoxes, we just can't be sure of anything if we try to change the past. And with all of those challenges, maybe we should just settle for that fraction of a second every hundred years that I talked about earlier. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you would say to your younger self in the past, and click on this video to find out why you would never survive as the last human on Earth. Thanks for watching, I'm heading into the next video, and I'll wait for you there.